Ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. We live in a world that is driven by technology and that has been over the last century or more. If you think about it from the steam engine to electricity, automobiles, technology has gradually changed our lives. But the important thing to note here is these changes have been gradual and they have allowed us as people to adjust to both the positive and the negative effects of these changes. The digital world, however, is changing very rapidly. If buying a phone on Amazon, hailing a cab on Ola, getting food delivered on Swiggy have become a part of our daily lives, then we know that digital technology is seeping into everything we do. I mean, the fact that 30% of the people here are more engrossed in their phones than hearing us shows how much it has seeped into our lives. Never before has such a change, see, I can already see people smiling there. Never before has such a change happened so rapidly and with such dramatic impact. But when we think of banking as an industry, it really had not changed much in the last 100 years. You still open a bank account giving the kind of basic information that your parents did and probably your grandparents did as well. Because banks were mostly focused on meeting regulatory compliance. And they knew that as long as they went and gathered more and more customers and offered reasonable service, it was unlikely that once you got attached to a particular bank in your lifetime, you would keep changing banks. So they had a ready base of customers who they could milk over a lifetime with a reasonable set of products and were more focused towards the regulator than anything more. But the digital world is changing all this. And regulators are increasingly open to trying out new ideas that fintech companies, insurtech companies present through what they call as a trial sandbox environment. Data, they say, is oil. And actually, they say now it's sunshine, because oil also will end one day. But sunshine, like data, will always be available. Availability of our digital footprints massive computing power, and cheap and fast bandwidth, and the availability of our smartphones. All this together is creating the fintech revolution. Fintech companies focus on a few services, unlike banks which try and do everything, but do those really well. And because they don't have the traditional costs of banks, they don't necessarily have a brick and mortar setup. They can do this far more efficiently and in a far more cost effective manner. India continues to have low penetration in financial services and FinTech can change that. Whether you pay for dinner through a MoviQuick digital wallet or buy various products through instant digital loans from the FinServe EMI card, or invest in the future through online unit plans of Bajaj Alliance on Policy Bazaar, you know that the fintech world is already upon you. The impact of fintech has varied around the world. In the US, where banking is huge and very well established, most fintech companies associate with one or more banks. However, last year, the announcement by Amazon that they would team up to create their own health insurance company and they would start selling mutual funds online presents a very unique challenge to incumbents there. In China, where the digital ecosystem by and large grew in the last 20 years in the absence of regulation, three large digital ecosystems led by Alibaba, Tencent, and Ping'an have come up. These three fierce competitors have even collaborated to create together an online insurance company called Zongan. Hence, the Chinese new fintechs, 
for them to grow, they necessarily have to align with one of these ecosystems because each one of them are closed ecosystems. India has followed a different path. The digital stack developed over a decade ago by Nandan Nilkani and team for the Indian government has set a very solid foundation for our fintech evolution. Other digital signatures, digital wallets, peer-to-peer -peer transactions, all ride on a common national open platform. What this means is that our fintech companies don't have to align to any one large player. They have a ready-made solid digital framework that our country offers them, and that frees up ideas and innovation. For incumbents in India, the only way to the future is by embracing the digital world. It is about building core capabilities internally using data, while also partnering with the fintech and insurtech ecosystem to improve for the customer. And that is what we at Bajaj FinServe are trying to do. Building an empowered team that has both the flexibility to disrupt what's working today and the opportunity to smartly partner with the outside world is the way to leverage this digital world of ours. Winners and losers will be known over time. But I believe India's fintech time has come. It is now. And those that embrace it towards better customer experience will be the eventual winners. Thank you.